Oh, I could feel something wet going down my leg. Didn't pee myself. Didn't go through any puddles. I looked down and the fuel tank's on its side. Alrighty, so today we're doing a rather important little upgrade. We're replacing this tyre uh, on my little rat bike there. Because as you can see, it's worn right the way down to the bands. And it's a small miracle that I didn't get a puncture when I was off-road only yesterday. Um, also, <clears throat> the torque that the motor puts through this wheel, when you start it up, it tends to skid and slide. And that one there looks looks fairly fresh anyway, so that it was only a matter of time before I wore the right all the way through. So we are upgrading to something with a bit more meat on it. I went out and I got a proper BMX tire, which should be absolutely fantastic. Now one of the tricks I picked up on to help protect your inner tube from pinch flats. That's where you go over a bump and the spokes poke up into the inner tube. And you do get this little rubber strip, but it's pretty terrible. Uh, I've got this cloth tape here. I did the same thing on the green bike uh, when I got a puncture in that. I do one or two layers of that thick cloth tape there, and that's just an extra layer of protection because even, you know, especially in older wheels like this, the heads of the spokes there, they're pretty much worn through the rubber anyway. Um, you just remember to grab a screwdriver or something and poke a hole through the tape so you can get your inner tube back through. Right, so I've just done one layer of that cloth tape. It is fairly thick tape. You don't want it in there too thick. Um, because it'll start impacting the seat of the tyre. So you want to just go around like this and make sure that that's bedded into that valley as flat as you can get it. So if you're having trouble seating your inner tube to the tyre, all you need to do is put a few puffs of air into it to get it to take that circular shape. Um, obviously not too much air otherwise you'll pop it trying to get it onto the rim but you want it to seat into that tire as well as possible you don't want any kinks in the tube uh, as you're putting it on all right there we have it the only thing left to do before putting it back on is just giving it an eyeball and making sure that that bead has seated evenly all the way around the rim all right, so we'll go ahead and stick this one on the bike and we'll see how she looks. All right, so our new rear tyre is on. Looks great. However, I noticed while I was riding yesterday, oh, it sounded a bit rattly, but I was still going strong. Didn't really think twice about it. I'm missing a mounting bolt. Now this one was loose but still in, and luckily these were still tight, but it's an important reminder that before and after every ride you should be checking for loose bolts. You have a couple of builds where nothing ever comes loose, and you get complacent, you tend to forget about it. And I'm just glad that I noticed that now before I went riding again and lost the motor. Um, that has happened to me before, on this frame too as it happens. I was riding along and the engine mount snapped and broke the chain. My plan for a big ride. <sighs> My chain just snapped. What is that? That's my motor mount. Front or back? 
that's what's happened. The motor mount's sheared off. That's what snapped my chain. So I'm going to have to go and find a replacement bolt for that and fix it up. Luckily I had an M8 bolt lying around that was long enough to get through that rear mount there. But um, I'm going to have to buy some more Loctite because I know that I am running short and there's not nearly enough in there to hold that. Um, but that'll be alright, that'll hold me for at least another ride. Uh, it's another reason why it's a good idea to bring, you know, a bag that size is a bit overkill. But, uh, you know, a couple of tools and a couple of spare bolts and bits and pieces. So if something does happen while you're out and about, you can uh, fix it on the go. Uh, in this bag, I've got pretty much everything except a spare motor in, in spare parts. And it is a bit heavy. But uh, the distances that I tend to do, you want to try and be able to get going again. To the best of your ability because it's usually a very long way to walk. All right, I've just fitted one of these so-called upgraded air boxes. Now, I don't really see how it's an upgrade. I mean theoretically it's catching the air that's coming this way and feeding it in. But considering where did I put it? Previously on this bike I had a bit of foam shoved between two, as you can see there. I feel like that was giving me better airflow than what that will. Um, and it cost a couple of dollars. It's one of these things that it ended up taking about three months to arrive. The only issue I had putting it on was the, uh, the choke lever was impacting so I've just snipped away uh, the corner there to give the choke enough room to, to go down there because we all know what happens when the choke rides up and if it's stuck halfway up it's no good. I wanted to try mounting the camera on the back here uh, but when I was doing it up I snapped the cheap plastic thing that it came with so I went digging and I found I think that was one of the mounting brackets for um, the CDIs that I've never used and it was pretty much a perfect fit. Um, I don't know how well it will hold up, but uh, all I can do is stick the camera in and give it a go. Fingers crossed the whole thing doesn't just drop off. something wet going down my leg didn't pee myself didn't go through any puddles I looked down and the fuel tanks on its side because the vibrations had worn through all the tape luckily I carry some with me um, 
I was saying just a few moments ago that you should double check everything before you ride. Absolutely check your fuel tank for security.